Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a 3D Endless Runner in Unity and welcome to episode 5. In this tutorial we are going to bring in a 3D character instead of just having a cube move throughout the level. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the character that we're going to be using in this particular tutorial you will have seen from that Timmy and Mousy game that I mentioned earlier in the series and we can actually get him directly from a place called Mixamo. Mixmo is a great place where you can go and get tons of different types of characters and their animations and just get it all working quite nicely. It is free as well to download and it is just Mixamo.com and you will need to create an account um, obviously for free and then you're good to go. So there are loads and loads of characters that you can choose from, just absolutely loads. And you don't necessarily have to use the same character I do or the same animations or anything. So we just need to make sure we are on characters. And I'm going to choose Timmy, which is down here somewhere. So if we click him and click use this character, like I say, you don't need to use the same one I do. It's entirely up to you. Uh, next, we need some animations for Timmy. So we're going to need a running animation. We'll need a jumping animation, an idle animation, and something where he falls over. You know, when you uh, hit a barrier or an obstacle or something like that. So let's go to animations. And we can select many, many animations here. So if we just click one, you can see this is a preview of what would happen. Cool. So we want to look for a run animation. So let's type in run in the search bar. And you have absolutely loads to choose from. Just just absolutely loads. Um, so I'm thinking, uh, I think I'm going to use the one I actually used for the game, which I believe was called Standard Run. But again, you don't have to use the same ones I do. Uh, it doesn't make much of a difference because fundamentally it'll still work the same no matter what animation you choose. Uh, so let's take Standard Run. Now. This animation in particular is a looping animation, but because the animation moves, we need to actually lock it in place. If you remember, the script we've written does all the movement for us, so we just need the model to have the animation. So, how do we now get this into Unity? There's a couple of steps that we have to um, abide by here. So if we go to download at the top, firstly, we need to change the format to Collada. And then we need to make sure we have with skin. 30 frames a second is fine. And then click on download. Now, what we need from this download is just the texture folder of this model. So if you were to just download the FBX for Unity, it may not necessarily work quite the same. It might not work as intended. We just need to have the textures. So I've gone ahead and I've created a folder just called Timmy right here. And inside there, all we need to do is if we open up standard run, we need to take this texture uh, folder and place it in our main folder. So drag and drop. And now we can get rid of that zip file. Next, we click on download once again. Make sure we do have with skin and change this to FBX for Unity and then click download. Give it just a moment to prepare it. And there we have down here our character. So once this is downloaded, all we need to do is drag and drop this into our character folder. So drag into Timmy and drop. So we have the first iteration of our character now in a folder. Next, we need to take some other animations. So let's go with a jump animation. And if we have a look here, so if we look at this one, for some reason he's jumping backwards. And I guess we could use that one. Um, in fact, yeah, let's use this one because it gives us a good chance to play around with animations later on in the series. So we're just kind of preparing things here. So I'm going to tick in place for that one and then click on download once again and now instead of with skin we change to without and then click on download once again 
and it will prepare the animation. And there we go. So we can drag and drop that in there once again. Next, we're going to need an idle animation. So idle. And any animation will do. Um, we can have that one, I guess. But that's not a looping animation, so I'm not quite happy with that one. Um, what about this one? Yeah, I think that might do. So let's click download on this one and make sure we are without skin and download once again. And drag and drop that into our folder. Next, we need something where he hits an object and falls down. Now, I used a specific animation called stumble backwards. And it was this one. So when he hits an object, he will just stop and tumble backwards. So let's download this one without skin again and download. And finally, let's bring this into our folder. So now we have the main model, which is called standard run. As you can tell, that is 33 meg. We have the other three animations and we also have the textures folder. So I'm now going to close down Mixamo. And in Unity, I'm going to right click, create a new folder, and call this Characters. And in here, I'm going to import this Timmy folder. So drag and drop that whole folder where everything is stored into Unity. Take just a second to import. And when it has done, you may get this message uh, telling you about a normal map. Just click on Fix Now. So we now have Timmy in our game. Cool, we have our 3D character model ready and raring to go. So how do we get it now from this to this game? Well, there's a stage that we have to complete first. So each of those animations, if we press the arrow button next to it, you'll see that they have the individual animations inside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that animation now and hold control and press D. What that will do is it will duplicate it and extract it from the FBX file. So do the same with jump, do the same with stumble backwards. And finally, the actual model itself. This has got some extra stuff in because this is the main model that we use, but just make sure we do hold control, press D for standard run on there. Now, Let's start with the idle animation and let's tick loop time up here at the top of the inspector panel. This just ensures that it will constantly loop. Now we don't want jump to loop because we only want that to be initiated whenever we press the jump button. Standard run also needs to be looped because we want that to be constantly occurring. Stumble backwards only needs to happen once because we only want that to happen once Timmy has hit an obstacle. So at this point, we now need to bring Timmy into this object, which is called player. So drag and drop Timmy into player and he will appear right there. So he is distorted. So we now need to modify this a little bit. If we uncouple Timmy out of player and then change the scale to two by two, so it's two, 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 we can see just how large Timmy is in comparison to the player cube that we have. So now we need to bring him down to the ground and correct his size. So obviously yours might not be exactly the same as mine, but it's again, it's your game. You just take as much time as you need to, to bring this into the correct perspective and size. So it doesn't matter if Timmy fills the cube or not, you know, if his head's poking out, if his legs poking out, it doesn't matter. As long as it's the general area of where the cube is, that's all that's going to matter. What we'll do now, is we will take the player cube and turn off the mesh renderer. So I'm just going to make sure Timmy does at least touch the ground here. Let's bring him backwards. And that does look fairly decent. Let's increase the size maybe a little. So let's go 1.2, 1.2, 1.2. And let's put him back inside the player cube, like so. So as it stands now, although the animation is technically attached, 
if we press play, the animation will not play out. So Timmy's there, that's all good and well, but we need to go back onto the character. And if we go on here, we'll see that everything is all in order. We can see all the motions are there. If we go on hips, we can see everything is there ready for the animation. It's just that the animation is not ready itself. So all we need to do is drag and drop that standard animation onto our character. And now if we press play, there is Timmy running. Awesome. So does he run, let's say at least half correctly, does his feet look like they are slipping on the ground? If they are, we may need to change uh, the animation speed. If they're not, then it's all good. So how do we do that exactly? Well, what we can do is we can actually attach our main camera to the player itself. Now we may go through a different phase uh, later on and depending how we want the camera to appear. But for now, testing it, we can just drag and drop the main camera onto the player. And now let's bring the camera into a better perspective. So I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to pan it down slightly to about there. And that is how it will look in our game. So let's press play and see how it looks. Cool. So everything is looking okay at least. We still can't go any further. That's fine. Obviously we can go off the edge here because we've not coded the fact that uh, we've either got something generating after or um, there's no boundary there. So either way, Timmy looks like he is running just fine. So if we go up here to where we have animator, and if you don't have this animator panel, all you can do to get it is down here in Timmy, you'll see this little icon here. This is known as the controller. This holds all the animations that we're creating. So if we double click it, you will end up seeing this section here. You'll open up the animator panel automatically. And you can see here in orange, this is our standard run animation. Let's now add the other animations. So let's add idle. Let's add jump. And let's add stumble backwards. Now, if you're following along with me and you've chosen the same jump that I have, he jumps backwards. This gives us a great opportunity to change the speed. Now, the speed is how fast the animation will play. And this is coupled once again to the time in Unity itself. So if your time is set to two, it will obviously play double speed, even if it's set to one. So what we want to do here is we want to reverse the animation. So let's have the speed as negative one. And what that will do is it will make the jump play backwards. But since he was jumping backwards anyway, it will play forwards. So let's check out that jumping animation by right clicking on it and setting as default state. And what that will do is it will make Timmy jump constantly. So let's try that out. Okay, there we go. So because we haven't looped it, let's quickly click on jump and tick loop time. He should look like he is jumping quite normally. There we go. So because we've changed that to a negative one, like I say, it plays the animation backwards, but because he was jumping backwards anyway, it plays it forwards. So let's untick loop time again, head back to the animator, and right click standard run and click set as default. And there we go. Our player can now run. We actually have a 3D player that we can move around. So obviously at the moment he will still go through all of these objects as is evident there. Um, which brings me on to what we're going to do in the next tutorial. We're going to actually bring in some environment. So we're going to make these particular models something else. So I think I mentioned a tree, a uh, rock, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to create or rather finish up this quick little section here and then set it as its own single object for later on in development. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching guys.